Okay, I didn't nail it. It looks like agent mode nailed it. Honestly, not bad at all. I'll give it full marks there. It did take a little bit, but it wasn't that long. And it was cool to see how it was thinking through everything. Microsoft just introduced agent mode in Excel and it's making some pretty big claims, saying that it's essentially like Vive coding for office products and that it'll feel like handing off work to an Excel expert. They've even got this chart where it benchmarks pretty closely to a human and about three times better than standard Copilot in Excel. So let's put it to the test. I'm Enrique Ruiz, I'm an Excel instructor from Maven Analytics, and I wanna provide a fresh perspective here. So this is going to be my very first time using agent mode, and here's what we're gonna do. I've got three data drills ready to go for beginner, intermediate, and advanced data analytics use cases, and I'm going to be vive coding with agent mode to see if it can solve them. So let's fire up Excel and let's get started. All right, so we've got the data for the data drill loaded into Excel online. Now it does have to be Excel online because right now agent mode is only available there. So with that said, to enable agent mode, you need to make sure that right here in the home tab, right next to the Copilot icon, you enable the frontier features. And then from there we can click into Copilot and then in tools, let's just select agent mode from those frontier features. So now we just need to describe what we'd like to do. Let's just copy the objective from the data drill directly. Over here, we've got turning bullish. Let's copy this objective. Control C, paste that in here. And I think there's a little bit more down here. So these are the columns that we need to create. Paste that in there. Okay. And we want then to create a 50 day moving average. These are close prices for the S&P 500, a 200 day moving average. So it's a short and long term average and then flag whenever there's a golden cross, meaning that the short term average surpassed the long term average, which is a technical indicator that there's going to be a bullish market coming. So let's see if it can solve that and let's see exactly what it does. All right. So it looks like it's thinking. I wonder if it's going to make any direct changes as it works or if it's just going to kind of let us know its process and then inject the results at the end. Again, this is the first time that I'm using it. So hopefully it's able to solve the drill uh, and give us some indication as to why it's doing it. All right, so it looks like it's going to try to convert the data to a table. If it does convert it to a table, it's going to make it a little bit more challenging. I'd probably prefer just sticking uh, to the normal grid and then you can use offset from that. I suppose you could still do it with a table, um, but then you can't just reference cells directly like the previous 50 or previous 200 if you just wanted to go with the completely manual approach. Okay. Okay, so it did convert to a table. We have columns for the 15 day, 50 and 200 day moving averages. It's expected to get errors here. Oh, it's okay, that's quite the formula. Yeah, so as soon as we hit the 50th day, the 50 day moving average starts to calculate. As soon as we hit 200, this starts to calculate. Don't doesn't look like we have any formula for the golden cross yet. Yeah, and it's hard if you're working with a table to reference the previous row just with a cell reference. Um, and you can't really start the formula in the second one. So I wonder if that's why it's struggling. Yeah, such so as the use of structured references. Yep. Decimal separators are formula length. Okay, so it, it looks like it knows that it's only in Excel on the web and there's some limitations there. I wonder if offset is one of those. No, it's in there. Oh, I just, maybe I shouldn't have moved anything. No, it's, this is still going, okay. Okay, golden cross is in here. It is using offset actually this time, which is interesting. See if we have any ones here. Plus 
planning to add a small summary. We didn't need that, but that's okay. Okay, so there's a one here. 50 day went to 93 to 94. Yeah, so that is an accurate golden cross, right? This was below that. It is now over that. So this is looking correct. It's done. Got the, okay, so it's two crosses. Very cool. Added the table, even add a little summary. There's two golden cross states. We've got the close and the 50 and 200. It's letting us know what it did, how it was built, yeah, converted it to a table, created these columns, added some date formatting here, it looks like. The assumption, yeah, from below to above on that date. And the early rows show an A. Um, yep, that's because we can't compute the full 50 or full 200 day averages and golden cross values to zero on those dates. Okay, so to confirm we got it correctly, we do have a validation question here. So what was the close price on the date of the most recent golden cross? Numbers only, no currency symbols. All right, so the most recent would be this one, July 1st, 2025. This is the close date. Looks like it's actually using a dynamic array formula here. So 6.17.65. 617.65. Okay, <laughs> I didn't nail it. It looks like agent mode nailed it. Honestly, not bad at all. I'll give it, I'll give it full marks there. It did take a little bit, but it wasn't that long. And it was cool to see how it was thinking through everything. And I'm actually quite happy with the solution that we got. So great job. Okay, let's try a data drill with an intermediate difficulty this time around. So again, we've got the data set here. We've got orders and we've got promotions and we've got agent mode open. So let's just copy the objective from our data drill. You've been given two tables. This is the task. And again, because we can't really add the picture, I'm going to let it know explicitly after this that we need to create a new promo ID column in the orders table that grabs the promo ID for the active promotion if applicable. So let's copy this, paste it in here, and let's just say that. Send the prompt through, and let's see what we get here. Hopefully it's able to solve it again. It should be a simple filter function. That's the way I'd tackle it. You can actually see my full solution uh, in the data drill solution video that we already have up. So let's see if it takes a similar approach. Let's see if it does choose uh, to simply use a filter function or if it gets a little bit more complicated like we saw before and starts using let. Uh, maybe to make it a little bit more readable, I don't think it's necessary in this scenario. And it's interesting that it says that it's going to check sample rows for accuracy, which is it's pretty unique, right? You don't often see AI kind of verifying its results. Although maybe it's just saying that without actually doing it behind the scenes. Hard to know, but hopefully it's correct. Okay, so we've got something. Nothing populated yet, but we've got the placeholder for the new column. It did understand that that's exactly what we were looking for. Well, I guess we could be having a form. Is there? Okay, so there is a formula in here. It is using filter. And it is using let. So we were correct in the in what we thought the approach was going to be. Let's see if there's any values here. Okay. So it looks like the first promotion started November 24th, ended November 29th. That's Black Friday, looks like 2023. Yeah, that looks correct. All right. It looks like it's done. Did a few spot checks. Yeah, that's exactly the same spot check that we performed. So that's impressive already. The next one, 1st of Jan, 2024 to the 7th. Yep, these are in here as well. It's telling us what it did. Make sure the promotions do not overlap. If they do, the first match found in the promotions table will be used. That's a good assumption to make. They didn't have any overlap though. Okay, so it looks like it was able to complete the data drill correctly. Now let's see if it can get the validation question right. So I'm going to grab this question. We want to know how many orders were placed outside of promotional periods. Let's see if it can tell us that. Now I like the idea of asking it the validation question because you wouldn't normally just want to 
execute on something, you typically want to answer any sort of a business question. And let's see if it also has the capability to do that based on the analysis or the task that it already performed. It's curious that it's 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 attempting to just kind of compute it, uh, whereas the human approach would be to filter and then just look at what's left over. Okay, so it looks like inside the table, it added its summary somehow, which is interesting. Looks like its answer is 19,016 orders. It's interesting how it manipulated the text box. It's not great. Um, it looks like it's using some product, which is neat. 149 in promotion orders. Should we just go ahead and try it? 1916. Okay, it's done. This is the answer. It, it did add it here. Uh, I'm sure we can just delete it ourselves. Let's just try it out. 1916. All right. It looks like agent mode nailed it again. It won't give it full marks this time because it did add these columns that weren't necessary. But to be fair, it did compute the result that we were looking for. Okay, time for the advanced data drill. Now, this should be the most challenging for Copilot because not only is the data set a lot larger, we're talking about almost a million records here. So I wonder if it's going to struggle with that. And I'd also argue that the most optimal solution for this would actually be using Power Query in Excel, which is something that agent mode does not have access to. So I am curious as to how and if it will be able to solve this data drill. So like always, I'm just going to copy the objective, paste it in here, and let it do its thing. Let's copy this. What we essentially want to do is from this lesson activity table, we want to create a leaderboard of the top 10 users with the longest active streaks, assuming today is September 29th, 2025. So let's paste that in here. And let's see if it can go three for three. Okay, I don't know how long it's been at this point, but it looks like agent mode is telling us that it's been working on this answer for a while. Should it keep going? I'm going to say for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to stop it. Uh, it hasn't really been able to solve it, and it's kind of going back and forth in circles, uh, trying the same solutions. So let's just say stop, and we'll just say it did two out of three, right? It did the beginner and the intermediate, and it was not able to solve the advanced data drill. So now that we've put agent mode through the ringer, let's see if Microsoft's claims have any substance to them. So number one, does agent mode feel like five coding? I'm going to say no to this one, mainly because in trying to one shot the solution to your prompt, it simply takes too long. To me, it felt a lot more like waiting. And I would have preferred if as it went through its thought process, it involved me a little bit more in the decision making. For example, it was evaluating whether to use a pivot table or a formula or whether to convert data to a table or not. Just ask me. I want to be included in that decision, and I feel like that would have felt a lot more like Vive coding to me. And I think the problem with labeling it Vive coding or Vive working is that in those scenarios, the user is already quite capable. It's just using AI to streamline the process, and I'm not quite sure that's what agent mode is doing here. It does lead nicely to our next question, though, which is, does it feel like you're handing off work to an expert? Honestly, yes. If you are a beginner and you're asking AI to solve a task for you, I do think that it's going to feel like you're handing off that task, in this case to an Excel expert, with all the positive and negative implications that come along with it. Will it get the job done? Most likely, and that's great. Will you understand what it did even though it explained it to you? Probably not. And sometimes that's okay too, as long as you're aware and comfortable with it. Finally, is it much better than standard Copilot in Excel? I think it is. I think it's at least much better at using Excel than standard Copilot is, since that relies a little bit too heavily on having to use Python in Excel 
four more moderately complex scenarios. And right now, the limitations of agent mode in Excel are really just the limitations of Excel on the web. So I'm really excited to see where they go from here. Now, if you're interested in learning more about foundational Excel or AI skills, make sure to check out mavenanalytics.io. We've got you covered. Now, as always, thank you so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. I'll see you in the next one.